I love Halloween, but I do not understand why we carve faces in pumpkins. I do. <gasps> oh my goodness, who are you? My name is Amy O'Lantern, and I sit in this pumpkin patch with all my pumpkin friends, and I tell stories to people that go by all about pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns. So, why don't you pull up a pumpkin and come sit down and I'll tell you a story. So, I was wondering, why do people carve a face on a vegetable and then put fire inside of it? Well, let me tell you the story. Pumpkins, actually jack-o'-lanterns, came from Ireland a hundred years ago. And they used to carve turnips like this one instead of pumpkins. There's this one guy, this story about this one guy named Jack and Jack, stingy Jack, was not a nice man, super mean. And he was so unkind and he would cheat people out of money. He was so bad, he was not allowed into heaven, right? I know, so then as time went on, he was made to walk the afterworld with only the tur light up turnip. And then as time went on, People would then hang up turnips themselves in their house the same way Jack did, and they did it to ward off evil spirits and any mean Jacks out in the world. So as time went on, people realized that pumpkins were so much easier to carve than these little hard turnips. So when people from Ireland immigrated over to the United States, they brought the tradition with them. It would seem to be a lot easier to carve a big old pumpkin instead of a tiny, hard turnip. Very true. That's a pretty neat story, and I have a greater understanding. But I don't know about carving pumpkins. I've never done one before. So how do you do it? How do you actually carve a pumpkin? That's a great question. So you have to go and get the perfect pumpkin. And then after that, you get an adult to help you with these special tools and you cut away at the pumpkin and you can make it any way you want. You can make a scary face or a happy face. It's so much fun. <sighs> it seems like a lot of work, but I know that there's stuff inside the pumpkin. What happens to that? Well, it's pretty amazing. There are these little seeds that people either eat because they're super tasty mm. or people will save them and then they will plant them in the springtime to grow their own pumpkin patch. Also, I have a stringy inside that can be used to make pumpkin pie. Oh. And this hard exterior is used to feed wild animals like deer. It's an amazing circle of life. So at the end of the season, nothing goes to waste. That's pretty awesome. Well, I was wondering, can I take a pumpkin from your pumpkin patch and make my own jack-o'-lantern? Absolutely. You just have to choose the perfect pumpkin. Okay. Well, can I take this one? This is Patrick. He would love to go home with you. Oh. Goodbye, Patrick. Goodbye. Thanks for the story. I learned a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. Teacher Kate coming to you from my backyard on this beautiful fall evening to talk to you about the topic of this week's videos. Can you guess what we're going to talk about? It's my favorite fall vegetable. That's right. We are talking about the very large, the very round, the very orange pumpkin. Well, the pumpkin is kind of a really neat vegetable because you can cook the insides of it and make a delicious pumpkin pie. You can roast the seeds and make a very healthy snack, but you can also just put it on your front porch and let it decorate your house in fall festive colors, or you can carve it for Halloween and make a jack-o'-lantern. The stories that I've picked for you today, there are two, are all about pumpkins. The first story is called Pumpkin Jack, and it's written by Will Hubble. And it's about a little boy 
who loves the pumpkin that he has carved. But he realizes that the pumpkin won't last forever. And so he discovers how to make his pumpkin live on. The second story is written by Junia Wonders. I love her name. And it's called the Rollaway Pumpkin. And as you can imagine, when you are large and round, you roll really well. And this little girl's pumpkin rolls really well. And it takes a whole town to capture this pumpkin. Wait till you see what happens to the pumpkin at the end of the story, though. It has a rather delicious outcome. Both stories are about pumpkins, and I hope that you enjoy my selections. Have a good week, and I hope you are enjoying the fall. Bye. See you later. Pumpkin Jack, written and illustrated by Will Hubble. When Tim carved his first pumpkin, it was fierce and funny and just perfect. A jack-o'-lantern this good deserved a name, so Tim gave it one. Jack. Long after the best trick-or-treat candy was eaten, Tim still kept Jack. At night, when a candle made Jack's face dance on the wall and fill the dark with warm pumpkin smells, Tim felt Jack was almost magic. Yet, too soon, the spell was broken. This pumpkin is beginning to rot, announced Mom. It's time to throw it out. Tim knew it was useless to argue. So he carried Jack to the garden, which was filled with the brown ghosts of last summer's plants. A dead garden is better than a trash can, thought Tim. Still, it made him sad to leave Jack outside and alone. Whenever chores or play brought Tim to the garden, he looked at Jack. Every time, Jack was different. He became wrinkled, and his fierce smile began to look silly. Mold spread over Jack's bright orange skin, and as the days turned colder, Jack grew flatter. Winter began. Soon Jack was hidden beneath snow, and Tim forgot all about him. The cold, heavy jacket days came. Snowmen and sliding days, indoor days, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Valentine's. When all these days had passed and March winds melted the snow, Tim found Jack. There wasn't much left, just a faded and crumpled pumpkin skin, a stem, and a few seeds. Jack's Halloween magic was a distant memory now. Tim scraped a thin blanket of earth over the last bits of his pumpkin. Goodbye, Jack, he whispered. When spring turned barefoot warm, a tiny sprout appeared where Jack had been. Tim found it and guessed what it was. In the days that followed, Tim weeded and watered and watched the sprout. Slowly and steadily, the plant changed and grew. It branched and spread a web of vines over the ground, but no pumpkins appeared. The days turned hot. Flowers opened on the plant each morning, yellow stars that twisted shut forever in the afternoon. Still, there were no pumpkins. Finally, Tim found a little green ball growing behind a crumpled blossom. A pumpkin! Tim let out a whoop and ran to show his mom. By August, the plant had spilled into the lawn. Tim's favorite game became pumpkin hunting. He carefully waded among the leaves, searching for green pumpkins like hidden treasures. 
School began again, and the days cooled. Tim had less time to visit his garden. When he did, the pumpkin plant seemed tired. There were few newer leaves, and the old tatter ones no longer hid the fat green pumpkins. Then, one October morning, Tim woke to see frost coating the garden. The frozen plants seemed changed to pale blue glass. After school, Tim discovered what the frost had done. The pumpkin plant's leaves were as limp as wet paper. It was dying. Tim searched among the withered leaves for the unripe pumpkins. He picked them and put them on the front porch, hoping for one more change. By Halloween, the pumpkins had ripened to bright orange. There were so many, for the plant had been generous. Tim was generous too. He gave away all but one. From jack-o'-lantern to seed to pumpkin again, the circle was almost complete. Now it was time for Tim to do his part. He gave his pumpkin a face. It smiled at him in a fierce and funny way. Tim smiled too and said, Welcome back, Jack. The Rollaway Pumpkin by Junia Wonders and Daniela Volpari. On a windy autumn day, Marla Little comes running down the hill yelling, Help! My giant pumpkin is rolling away! Onward it goes, rolling and turning, with no sign of stopping. Watch out! She yells as her pumpkin rolls ahead toward the farmer's shed. Diddle dee dee do! Oh, what shall I do? Hurry! Let's go after it before it gets any further, offers the farmer. Watch out! She yells as her pumpkin rolls ahead toward the baker's wagon. Diddle dee dee do! Oh, what shall I do? Hurry! Let's go after it before it rolls any further, offers the baker. Watch out! She yells as her pumpkin rolls ahead toward the milkman's cart. Diddle dee dee do! Oh, what shall I do? Hurry! Let's go after it before it rolls any further, offers the milkman. Watch out! She yells as her pumpkin rolls ahead toward the butcher shop. Diddle dee dee do! Oh, what shall I do? Hurry! Let's go after it before it rolls any further, offers the butcher. Watch out! She yells as her pumpkin rolls ahead toward the parade marchers. Diddle dee dee do! Oh, what shall I do? Hurry! Let's go after it before it rolls any further, offer the parade marchers. Look! A giant pumpkin is leading the way! This is the best vegetable parade ever! Hurry, says the chef. The marchers will be here soon. The marchers will be hungry, and a feast we must make ready. Diddle dee dee do! I know what to do! shouts Marla Little as her pumpkin rolls toward the chef, stirring a very big cauldron on the lawn. In one swift move, she tips the cauldron forward so her giant pumpkin rolls into it, never to come out again. Well, not until the most delicious pumpkin soup is cooked and served to everybody. If you like The Runaway Pumpkin, here's other books by Junia Wonders.